Hi, crafting friends. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, a special welcome. I'm taking you through this glittery forest of trees and showing you some really pretty vintage items that I'm going to combine with some Dollar Tree supplies, Dollar Tree boxes, vintage containers, gift tins, balls, baubles, and all kinds of charming decorative embellishments. And I'm going to put together some really fun, festive Christmas displays. I think you're going to enjoy this so much and it will give you, I hope, lots of inspiration to create some of your own. I'm going to begin now with this first vintage tin. 50 years of sharing the very best is the theme of this Nestle's vintage tin that I found at our local antique store. The can is decorated on all sides with these nostalgic pictures. So I'm going to complement it by using nostalgic decorative items. But first, we need to fill it so that we can lay in our floral foam. The floral foam will form the foundation for adding in all of the decorative embellishments. I used some cotton batting, and here I'm packing in some of this foam that I got in a uh, delivery box. So it's just building up the bottom to allow me to then lay in that square of floral foam to serve as our foundation. This floral foam is from the Dollar Tree and is very soft and it's very easy then to use the side of the can to cut pieces to fill in those uh, curved gaps. We want it flat all the way across the top. It doesn't have to be real neat because all of that's going to be concealed, but we do want to fill in all the gaps so that we have a nice uh, flat surface on which to begin to decorate. So now that we have this level foundation of Dollar Tree floral foam, the fun begins. We're going to let our imaginations take flight as we combine elements to create a beautiful vignette. I'm starting out with a bottle brush tree. Now you'll notice there's some pretty cranberry red in the outfits on some of the uh, pictures. So I'm found this collection of trees at Marshall's and I bought a box of five. Dollar Tree has them as well, but I didn't find this exact color. But for this one, I'm going to use this cranberry red and I'm using some hot glue after removing that wooden base. That wooden base just simply unscrewed. And now I'm inserting that sharp wired tip uh, covered with hot glue into the back center of this tin. The next thing I'm going to do is choose my principal element, which is one of these from a set of vintage salt and pepper shakers. And it's got a beautiful verse. We give you thanks for all your gifts. And you see she has her hands folded in prayer. I thought it was a lovely echo of the sentiment that's depicted on this tin, which shows a lot of sharing and uh, good times. Here I have an assortment of small balls. I bought three different boxes of these. Dollar Tree has an assortment of small balls. These I found also at Marshall's, and I thought the colors were so pretty. Each box has a different color palette. These have a more muted matted finish, which I thought looked really pretty with the vintage classic look. So I'm just pulling out some that I thought would be really pretty as enhancements. And you can see I'm just using hot glue. Here I have three bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree. These little gold ones again are lovely uh, compliments to the gold in the designs of the tin. I'll add in some of the gold balls as well as three of these little gold bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree. As you create these charming scenes, you want to tie together the colors that you see in the design of the tin as well as the sense of the theme. You'll be amazed really as you look at the design and get a sense of items that would echo that theme. I found my items at antique stores, thrift stores, Dollar Tree, 
and in my own collection of ornaments. Here you can see I'm adding in another gold bottle brush tree as well as this red ball. And you see I took off the hanging hook and just added hot glue. The little wooden house I found in a collection from an antique store. It's amazing how all of these elements do come together to create a really playful design. Now, in this case, I want to also tell you that more is more. You want to really fill it up. You don't want any uh, holes exposed. You want all that floral foam concealed. These items are not expensive. If you look around Goodwill or thrift stores, or we happen to have a very nice antique store near us, and you'd be amazed all the little miniatures that you can find. Some of them are new in the package. Here's some pearls uh, on a beaded trim that I purchased from Amazon. I actually got it in three colors, blue, pink, and the natural pearl color, because I thought it would be so pretty uh, woven throughout these designs. It creates a very unifying effect, but also just a very uh, exquisite look as it's draped throughout. You'll see, I'm going to continue to add strands of that, even allowing some of it to drape. But now I'm continuing to add more of our balls. Here's a pretty one uh, that I thought added a little bit of brightness. And I'm also going to add in some other little wooden elements to complement the wooden house. As you can see, I also decided to add in some balls that had some of the glittered uh, finish on them, and that adds another really pretty element of texture and shine. Here I'm using this blue beaded strand as a garland, weaving it through around all of the different ornaments and balls and different uh, figures that are in here, even allowing some of it to drape. And it's a very unifying element, very exquisite touch. Now I'm adding in some of the Dollar Tree uh, glittered pipe cleaners. And these are really pretty to use to outline the rim of your container. So a drop of hot glue on either end works really well to hold it in place. You can choose any colors that complement the color palette on your tin. Here I thought gold and red would be pretty, and I'm just securing them all the way around that rim of the container. You can see that adding the red one underneath that strand of gold really does bring in a nice pop of color. To fill in some little gaps, I decided to add some pearls. These are from Dollar Tree, and they're really pretty soft colors that complement the colors in the design. I decided to stack them, so I made a little pool of hot glue and then just secured them in place. After creating a cluster of these pearls, I used some more of the garland just to drape and uh, weave throughout our design. I used a drop of hot glue in just a couple of places, but for the most part, it just weaves in and out of all of the different balls and figurines, so it really does uh, stay in place nicely. The next thing I did was to add some more embellishments to the back of the design. Here I'm just adding a little peppermint shaped embellishment that I took off the bottom of that pink bottle brush tree from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck that in the back, securing it with some hot glue. This is the first time I've created something like this and I'm so thrilled with this craft. I think you'll enjoy it very much too. It's so much fun to take a theme and embellish it and echo that sentiment from the bottom of the container all the way up through the top. In this case, right up to the top of the bells on the little angel decoration. For those of you who are new, my name is Lisa and I'd love to invite you to consider subscribing to my channel. It's fun, free, and festive. For our next project, we're going to use almost entirely Dollar Tree items. 
all dollar and a quarter snowman, this decorative box, as well as a bottle brush tree. I'm also using this sweet little deer that I got from an antique store. You could find similar many places. I'm starting out by adding a nice amount of hot glue to the wooden knob on the bottom of this bottle brush tree. And then I'm just going to secure it in that upper left corner. Now the next star of the show is going to be this sweet little snowman. I found this at the Dollar Tree. It's part of their ornaments collection. I'm beginning by removing those arms, but I do intend to reinsert them. You could also replace them with sticks from your yard, or I've also used Dollar Tree cinnamon sticks that I've broken up to look like twig arms. I'm removing the hat with the intention of replacing it at a different angle. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Next, I'm going to remove that bottom snowball. We wanna create the look of a melting snowman. To do that, I'll show you the little tips and techniques I've learned. We want to be able to position him at an angle, leaning backward as though he's melting in place. So to do that, I remove the bottom snowball, and now I'm cutting at an angle away some of that styrofoam in the back. It doesn't have to be real neat, but you do want to create that angled section so that he'll lean backward when you glue him down. I'm using a nice a pool of hot glue and positioning the snowman toward the back of the box. I wanna have plenty of surface area in front of him for the melting effect. To do that, I'm using a copious amount of hot glue, which I'm just uh, putting around the front of him and also around the sides. And you just wanna squirt out that hot glue um, first of all, making sure that he is secure and then just creating a nice pool that'll look like melting snow. The next step is to replace the hat, but this time to put it at an angle as though it's melting and the hat is slipping downward. And you see here now I'm just enlarging that pool of hot glue surrounding him. Once it dries partially, I'm going to then sprinkle on some very fine glitter that I purchased from Amazon. Adding this fine glitter creates the effect of sparkly, glistening, melting snow. I think it's remarkable how realistic the effect is. I also replaced the twig arms and I tucked a little sprig of greenery under his cap. I wanted to conceal the little spot of original hot glue uh, where the hanging cord was as well. Now, before I add in our sweet little deer, I'm going to use a jingle bell from this package I bought at the Crafter Square section in Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use that to embellish his scarf, adding on a drop of hot glue to hold it in place. Each charming detail really does make a difference to enhance the overall effect. Now I'm gonna add in our sweet little deer. Now I'm adding a little drizzle of hot glue over the ends of these twig arms to create the illusion of melting snow that's frozen again. And adding a little sprinkle of the glitter over that hot glue just finishes off that glistening effect. Now I'm going to use some hot glue on the bottoms of all four of the little deer's paws so that I can adhere it in place. I'm propping it up partially against that icy layer. You can see that the deer is now inquisitively looking at her newly discovered forest friend. It's so much fun to see the stories come to life as you put these arrangements together. One of the final steps now is to use some of that beaded trim. This time I'm choosing the pink and I'm going to use it as a garland around our snow dusted tree. It's very easy to just encircle the tree. The uh, beads cling to those bristle brush branches. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. And you can see I'm just going all the way around. You only need a drop or two of hot glue to hold the ends in place. 
And after getting the beaded garland secured in place, I'm going to add a final decorative detail. I bought a package of glittery pipe cleaners from the Dollar Tree, and I'm choosing two of the silver ones to outline the top rim of the lid of the box. By adding a drop of hot glue on either end, it will hold it in place and allow you to still open and close the box easily. This box is a gift in itself but it also would be very useful to hold a special present for someone at Christmas time or even for a winter birthday. So I want to make sure that the box is still functional while being very decorative. I would love to hear your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Please let me know which of these projects you especially enjoyed. I love reading the comments. I read every one and reply to all of them. It's such a blessing to get to know the members of this community as we share our crafting uh, joys and ideas. Here's the finished project. I'm so delighted with the charm of this, and I look forward to using it to hold a special gift. I'm working on another video in which I will be showcasing two more different containers with different scenes. I think you're going to really enjoy those as well. One is going to showcase a gingerbread village. I appreciate you watching. Do take care. And on this Veterans Day, I especially want to say with deepest gratitude, thank you to all the veterans for your service. As they say, freedom isn't free. May God bless our veterans and the United States of America. Take care and God bless.